Okay, part one, um, prepare and create the central file. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is you're working away on a Revit project. There's only one person working. You can have different people work on the project, but not at the same time. So basically, you're using your project just like you always have. So you get the project underway by regular Revit processes. Okay, you create your levels, create your grids, structural grids add your floors in, your exterior walls, maybe your roof, and set up all your um, families and project standards for dimensions and uh, textiles and all your annotation and uh, stuff like that. So get, get the project underway, get some uh, the bulk of the kind of envelope of the building. You don't have to do all the interior partitions and stairs or anything, just kind of get something there that you can kind of uh, use as a starting point and then you say okay I've got it ready now we're gonna bring in multi-users we're gonna enable work sets so then you say okay next step save the project as is so save the project as a regular Revit project and give it a name and then put it away somewhere because it's gonna change now okay then save it again and give it a different name this time. So save it and give it a name with the word central in it. For example, you could call the file Central Halifax Theater. Okay, so do a save as and name the file using the word central. Okay, this doesn't make it a central file, but it does give it the right name. Okay, now while you're in that file or reopen it, however it is, open that file named central. So you're in this file right it is a clone of the original file okay nothing special so far all you've done is opened it up then you're gonna click the work sets button for the very first time aha what's gonna happen is Revit is going to enable the work sets and it's going to generate a bunch of default work sets and then it's going to present you with those work sets and give you the option to create more work sets at which point you can go in and create some more work sets so you enable the work sets and then if you want you can split the project up at that point into more work sets which we'll talk about but you don't even really have to do that it puts everything that's not in a special work set in a work set called work set one and for the most part you can actually work just fine with multiple users with that one work set by using borrowing. So now we've enabled work sets, okay? And we've maybe added a few new work sets and split that up. Next thing we do is we save the new file. So the first time you save the new central file, you need to save it on the server, okay? Because now it's almost a full central file. It has the work sets, but now you need to save it on the server, okay? Then you save it, then you close it and now it's a central file okay so you uh, rename it here then you enable the work sets then you split it up into more work sets if you want then you save this file on the server and then you close it down at this point now you actually have what is called a central file sitting on the server you don't, for the most part, go back and open that up unless you're administrator. That's a central file. That's the big kahuna. Okay, And Revit actually distinguishes the difference and can distinguish the difference between a regular Revit project file and a central Revit file when the file gets open. So when you open up, if you go to open up this central file, Revit knows it's a central file, as opposed to if you just use Revit to open a regular project file. And there is some differences with saving, etc. Okay, so that's part one, really, of creating the central file. Okay, take your file, rename it, enable work sets, split it up, save it on the server, close it down, Bob's your uncle. Okay, at the end here now, at this point, you now have what is called a central file waiting on the server. Step two is creating a local copy of the central file for purposes of editing, and these are what all your users are going to do over here.